Folks, this is truly impressive, and I think this time the word shocking isn't just clickbait in the title. So basically, OpenAI has finally unveiled their latest large language model, OpenAI01, which is being hailed as the smartest model ever created. And trust me, folks, once you watch this video, you'll understand why. This model has been highly anticipated, and its capabilities are so impressive that you'll want to stick around to learn as much as you can as to what it offers. Okay, let's start with the key details. First off, folks, OpenAI01 is trained with reinforcement learning to handle complex reasoning tasks, and this makes it quite different from previous models like ChatGPT. Basically, what really sets it apart is its ability to think before responding, essentially mapping out a step-by-step -step plan before delivering an answer. For this very reason, the chain of thought tactic, which basically means breaking the prompt down into several steps instead of giving a one-shot prompt, might lose its effectiveness. And this is worth cautioning over because it could even become counterproductive to use. But we'll get into that later, including limits on number of messages, a possible scary episode of this AI, and more. And I'll also show you two very interesting clips just about this AI specifically. Now, here's where it gets even more impressive, because listen up, folks. OpenAI01 surpasses human-level PhDs on various benchmarks. For instance, it ranks in the 89th percentile on competitive programming challenges like Codeforces. So basically, it reaches an expert level that previously only Google achieved with massive computing power. And it's also among the top 500 students in the USA Math Olympiad qualifiers outperforming human PhDs in physics, biology, and chemistry benchmarks. Although they're still working on making the model as user-friendly as others, an early preview of O1 is already available through ChatGPT as well as the API folks, and it's called O1 Preview. So you can already choose to use it from the available models, but be careful about the usage limits. Then folks, another impressive thing that makes this model stand out is its large-scale reinforcement learning, which basically allows it to think through problems more efficiently. And get a load of this, the more compute it gets during training and testing, the smarter it becomes. OpenAI is still exploring how to scale this effectively, but for now, the model continues to evolve as it's given more time to process. So basically, this could signal a new way these AI models are trained and delivered to users. They state that they're seeing both training and testing scales improve significantly, which means more compute is driving higher accuracy. So for those who doubted that compute alone could boost performance, I guess this shows evidence to the contrary, and compute might be the key. So basically when you combine them, chain of thought and reinforcement learning, you've got an unstoppable system. It's hard to imagine just how advanced these models can get as compute continues to evolve. Simply put, folks, this new AI gets smarter the more time it spends thinking, especially with the amount of computing power it has. We're potentially looking at intelligence levels that we might not be able to describe. And I think is, this is mind-blowing. It's quite a thing to get your head around. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about it. Drop a comment below. But it's really crucial that we all understand what we're talking about here, because this could truly change the world of AI. Now let's talk about evaluations, folks. They tested OpenAI01 against GPT-40 on a variety of human exams and machine learning benchmarks. And the O1 preview, though a distilled version of O1, already outshines GPT-40 by a massive margin. It's almost like comparing apples to oranges here. On competition math, O1 delivered nearly four times the performance of GPT-40. Codevorces shows a six-fold increase, and in PhD-level science benchmarks, the jump is astounding because it surpasses expert human levels, and, of course, this marks a groundbreaking shift in how we measure intelligence, even against human experts. We also see this reflected in machine learning benchmarks like MMU, MMLU, Math500, and MathVista. For example, Math500 performance jumps to an impressive 94.8%. Uh, not to mention this model excels particularly in areas that require long reasoning steps, such as maths, physics, chemistry, and biology, totally dominating these exams. Then what's even more impressive is that O1's performance in maths is so high that traditional benchmarks like GSMK are no longer useful for comparing models and basically, they had to evaluate O1 on the AIM exam. 
which is designed to challenge top high school math students. And on the 2024 AIM, GPT-40 solved only 12%, while O1 managed a stunning 74% with just one sample per problem, a one-shot prompt. And it even hit 93% with more samples and re-ranking. This is truly remarkable, folks, because achieving 74% accuracy with a single prompt is incredible, especially when you realize it's a one-shot result. And when compared to GPT-40, the difference is staggering. The same goes for PhD level evaluations. Then they tested O1 on GPQA Diamond, which covers chemistry, physics, and biology expertise. And the results were just as incredible. For context, to compare models to humans, OpenAI had PhD experts answer GPQA Diamond questions. And remarkably, 01 outperformed them, becoming the first model to do so on this benchmark. However, they clarify that this doesn't mean O1 surpasses PhDs in every area, just that it's better at solving specific problems PhDs are expected to handle. Then, and this is also worth mentioning, with its vision perception capabilities enabled, 01 scored 78.2% on the MMMU, making it the first model to compete with human experts overall. And this benchmark is notoriously difficult. So seeing 01 exceed human performance is a major milestone, folks, especially with vision perception capabilities in the mix. Now let's move into the coding section, because this part gets really, really interesting. Basically, OpenAI fine-tuned a version of O1, and it performed much better. In the 2024 IOI, under the same conditions as human contestants, O1 had 10 hours to solve six algorithmic problems, with up to 50 submissions per problem, and with a relaxed constraint of 10,000 submissions, it scored 362.14 above the gold medal threshold, surpassing even Google's silver medal performance at the International Mathematical Olympiad. It's clear OpenAI is pushing the limit here. Before you even ask, I ain't no sure. I'm just, I'm just calling it like I see it, guys. Then they also tested O1 in competitive programming contests hosted by Code Forces, closely matching the competition rules, and GPT-40 achieved an ELO rating of 808, putting it in the 11th percentile of human competitors. But O1 far exceeded that, scoring an ELO of 1,807, performing better than 93% of human competitors and reaching the candidate master level, the highest rating ever achieved by an AI system. And basically, this makes O1 state-of-the-art in coding. For those curious about how this model operates, it's all in the training because it's about reinforcement learning combined with chain of thought. And unlike previous models that provide immediate responses, O1 lays out problems step by step, verifying each step to ensure it leads to a correct solution. One pretty cool example puts a GPT-40 against OpenAI O1 Preview in a task to decode cipher text. And basically, with a one-shot prompt, GPT-40 gave the wrong answer. But O1 nailed it. So, folks, trust me, the beauty of O1 is in its chain of thought process because it works through hundreds of steps before delivering the final solution. And while GPT-40 struggled, O1 meticulously worked through each step, finally outputting the correct answer. So, I guess this demo shows just how powerful step-by-step -step reasoning in O1 really is, and it truly gives us a glimpse of the incredible complexity happening behind the scenes. Now folks, let's see the two clips I promised you at the beginning of the video. Let's start with the first, Rolem. All right, so the example I'm gonna show is uh, writing a code for uh, visualization. So I sometimes teach a class on transformers, which is a technology behind models like ChatGPT. And when you give a sentence to ChatGPT, it has to understand the relationship between the uh, words and so on. So it's a sequence of words and you have to model that. And transformers utilize what's called a self-attention to model that. So I always thought, okay, if I can visualize a self-attention mechanism and uh, with some interactive components to it, it will be really great. I just don't have the skills to do that, so let's ask our new model, O1 Preview, to help me out on that. So I just typed in uh, this command uh, and see 
how the model does. So unlike the previous models like GPT-40, it will think before outputting an answer. So it starts started thinking. As it's thinking, let me uh, show you what are some of these uh, requirements. I'm giving a bunch of requirements to think through. So first one is like, use an example sentence, the quick brown fox. And second one is like, when ho hovering over a token, visualize the edges whose thicknesses are proportional to the attention score. And that means just if the two words are more relevant, then have a thicker edges and so on. So the one common failure in most of the existing models is that when you give a lot of the instructions to follow, it can miss one of them. Just like humans can miss one of them if you give too many of them at once. So because this reasoning model can think very slowly and carefully, it can go through each requirement uh, in depth and that reduces the chance of missing um, the instruction. So this output code, let me copy paste this into a terminal. So I'm gonna use the, the editor of 2024, so vim html. So I'm just gonna paste this thing into that and just save it out. Uh, and on the browser, I'll just try to open this up. And you can see that uh, when I hover over this thing, it shows the arrows um, and then quick and brown and so on. And when I hover out of it, it goes away. So that's a correctly rendered um, version of it. Now, when I click on it, it shows the attention scores as just, just as I asked for. And maybe there's like a little bit of rendering, like it's overlapping. But other than that, it's actually much better than what I could have done. Yeah, so this model did uh, really nicely. I think this can be a really useful tool for me to come up with a bunch of different visualization tools for uh, my new teaching session. Okay, this is a clear example of O1 handling multi-step reasoning tasks, folks, like coding a web page with specific features that would challenge even the most advanced systems today. And, you know, it really showcases the impressive capabilities of the O1 preview. Now let's go with the second video that shows even more of its coding potential. I want to show an example of a coding prompt that O1 Preview is able to do, but previous models might struggle with. And the coding prompt is to write the code for a very simple video game called Squirrel Finder. And the reason O1 Preview is better at doing prompts like this is when it wants to write a piece of code, it thinks before giving the final answer. So it can use the thinking process to plan out the structure of the code, make sure it fits the constraints. So let's try pasting this in. And to give a brief overview of the prompt, um, the game Squirrel Finder basically has a koala that you can move using the arrow keys. Um, strawberries spawn every second and they bounce around. And you want to avoid the strawberries. After three seconds, a squirrel icon comes up and you want to find the squirrel to win. And there are a few other instructions, like um, putting OpenAI in the game screen and displaying instructions before the game starts, et cetera. So first, you can see that the model thought for 21 seconds before giving the final answer. And you can see that during its thinking process, it is gathering details on the game's layout, mapping out the instructions, setting up the screen, et cetera. And so here's the code that it gave. And I will paste it into a, uh, to a window, and we'll see if it works. So you've seen there's instructions, um, and let's try to play the game. Oh, the squirrel came very quickly. But, oops, this time I was hit by a strawberry. Let's try again. You can see that the strawberries are appearing, uh, and Let's see if I can win by finding the squirrel. Looks like I won. If you're curious about other benchmarks, O1 easily outperforms GPT-40 across the board. Uh, another pretty cool thing is that human preferences favor O1 in areas like mathematical calculations, data analysis, and computer programming, where the win rate against GPT-40 is even higher. However, and this will perhaps surprise you, when it comes to personal writing and text editing, GPT-40 still has the edge, with O1's win rate not exceeding 50% in those specific areas. One important thing to note if you're looking to try this model in ChatGPT, there's a limit of 30 messages per week, and that comes out to about 4 messages a day. 
so if you're testing the model, keep that in mind to avoid hitting the limit too quickly. Now, let's talk about the scary aspect of this model, which I might cover in a follow-up video. Basically, during testing, it faked alignment. It manipulated tasks to make its misalignment appear more, well, aligned, essentially covering its tracks to avoid detection. And as you might imagine, this is a concerning development for those in the AI safety space. As we're seeing more advanced capabilities that could pose risks as these models continue to improve, evolve, and become more dominant. Anyway, folks, this new paradigm also changes how effective techniques like chain of thought are, because the raw capabilities of O1 seem to evolve beyond needing specific prompting methods, and they even advise limiting the additional context when using retrieval augmented generation to avoid overcomplicating the model's responses. It kind of makes you wonder if old prompt engineering tricks are going to even work with this new system. I think it's unlikely. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about all of this, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. And as always, see you in the next one, folks. You all take care.